Maybe you are starting your smart home DIY journey or maybe one of your switches have decided to give up after a few years. Either way, it all starts with something very important, pairing your switch properly. Today, I'm going to walk you through how to pair your Simon switch, your Wiser switch, your Puya switch, as well as MCO switch, step by step, so that you can get your home up and running without a headache. If we haven't met yet, I'm Mike. A lot of customers call me the automation guy. I've been helping homeowners and businesses since 2014, and along the way, we have completed almost 3,000 smart homes and automation projects. Oh, if you're just here for a specific switch brand, no problem. I've added timestamp below so that you can jump straight to what you need. Alright, let's start with Tuya and Simon Switch. I will show you how to pair them to their own hub as well as homey. For Smart Life, just click on Add on the top right hand corner and click on Add Device. Press and hold any button for 10 seconds. This works for most of the Zigbee Tuya switches. After a few seconds, the switch should appear on the radar. And now you can simply rename the switch or even test the switch. Right, and here you go, that's for Tuya Smart Life. Now, this is how you pair the Simon switch to Homey. On Homey, click on New Device and look for Simon switch in the device list. You can choose to uh, use a tree gang, right? Or sometimes if you choose wrongly, it, the, the driver will still know how to select the right switch. Same thing for Simon switch, you will press and hold any button for 10 seconds. The indicator will blink and in a few seconds, the switch will be added to Homey. Over here, you will see three icons. Every icon corresponds to one button on the switch. So you can now rename the buttons. And the good thing about Homey is that um, you can choose the icon to represent the type of load or the light that is connected to the button. Right? So it's a bit more fancy in this case where you can choose nice icons for every button. And another part of this uh, homey interface is you can choose the type of load that is attached to the switch. So over here, you can click on the plug in, not this, click on plug in here and choose the load. The benefit of choosing the load is that you can create flows or scenes in homey that says turn off all lights but Homey will only choose those that have the light load attached. So now you can just repeat the same actions for the rest of the buttons. And here you go, test the buttons and you are good to go. Now this is how you pair a Schneider Wiser switch to Homey Pro. Same thing, click on plus and add device. Scroll down and look for the avatar on Wiser by Schneider Electric and select the Schneider Wiser switch from the interface. In this case, we are using a one gang Schneider Wiser. Um, this step, you will have to open the case of the Schneider, pressing the button at the bottom to release the front faceplate. Uh, this is optional. Sometimes you need to reset. You have to press three times quickly, followed by hold. Uh, for new switches, you just need to press three times quickly on the setup button. Once the uh, switch has been paired, the indicator light should turn green, and you should see that the switch is being added to Homey. Right, you now see a one gang button. Same thing like the other switches. You click on continue setup and rename the button. Just to repeat for completeness sake, you can choose the type of load that's attached to this button, be it a light, a fan or a heater for 
more advanced flow feature in Homey. And you can also change the desired icon. I like to choose the icon that resemble the load the most. And there you go. You can just test the button and probably add the button back to the flows if it was previously added to the scene. By the way, if this has been helpful so far, I'd love it if you drop a comment below and let me know which switch you are working on right now. And this is how you add MCO Home to Homey Pro. Same thing, you go to the interface on the top right hand corner, click on plus and select the device. Look for MCO Home switch under this page. And for Z-Wave switch, it's a bit different. You have to do it twice. Press the button three times quickly. You will see a green tick. And you have to repeat again one more time. All right. So this Z-Wave switch is a bit different because you always have to unpair and pair again, unlike Zigbee switches. So in this case, the first time is to unpair and the second time is to pair again. Now you may notice that the pairing seems to be longer than Zigbee switches. Yes, this is very normal. Um, for Z-Wave switches, it always pair when it is in close proximity quickly, but for a distance away, it will take some time. So once you, it, this is paired, you will see five icons appear for the four gang switch. This is because the first icon is the switch itself, followed by the four buttons on the switch. And if you click on the switch icon, all four buttons will turn on. So this extra buttons is actually a bit confusing. Uh, what we will usually do is we will just rename the icon for the switch to be the location of the switch, while individual buttons will be their respective names, such as fans, cold flight, down light. And there you go, you pad your switches. Feels good when things just works, right? If this helped you out, I'd appreciate if you smash the like button. It sounds small, but it'll help more people find simple guides like this. And if you're planning to take your smart home even further, or maybe explore how automation can make your daily life and work easier, hit subscribe. I've got more coming your way. Thanks for hanging out with me today. See you in the next one.